this is uh, a polynomial equation, and I'm interested in solving it. Okay? Now, you might remember, uh, this is not just any polynomial, it's a uh, cubic. You can tell by the power up here, right? And cubics are kind of gross, right? We don't like cubics. Quadratics are great, super easy, but cubics are terrible, right? In fact, complex numbers were partly designed to deal with um, cubics. The cubic formula, even if all the roots of your cubic are all real, the formula for cubic equations has complex numbers in it, okay? So there's a long story to do with that. What can I do with this? What on earth does it have anything to do with what we've been doing recently, okay? Any suggestions? Yeah. Um, you could let x be in the positive or side Okay, I can make a substitution. Now, maybe you're not like Harry, and you look at that and think, what on earth would make you think to, to do that? Well, number one, it's the only stuff on the board, so that's a bit of a, a hint. But secondly, <laughs> secondly, there is a clue in the question. And I admit it's a fairly vague clue, but now you know enough to recognize it. See those coefficients there? Eight. Negative 6. 8 and negative 6. Do they look familiar at all? Yeah. Right? Uh, I see them here. I see them here. Do you see that? It's just that I need to double them, and then I get 8 and negative 6. Not only that, but there's a cubed, and then this is to the power of 1. See that? Okay. Now, admittedly, it's a bit of a stretch like for, for you now, but after you get used to this, you're like, oh, okay, this is a tool I can use. right? So here's the step I'm going to suggest. Let's make this substitution. Okay. Remember I told you, uh, in mathematics, you approach something from another angle, you can often gain insight, right? Let's have a go. If I let x equal cos theta, the straight substitution looks like this. 8 cos cubed, 6 cos minus 1. Okay? So far, so good. Looking at what I know and how similar that is to this, I am going to take this 1 over here, so if I add one to both sides, it leaves me with this. And now I'm going to, anyone? I, I'm going to take out a factor of two, aren't I? And then I might as well divide through while I'm doing that, okay? So if I divide through by that common factor, that leaves me with this. Okay. And then because I just spent all this time proving this, I've got this. Now this is amazing, just before we proceed, just look at what you achieved. This thing, what were you gonna do with that? Like, how are you gonna factorize that? I'm just gonna start putting in numbers. You'll actually have learned in, you've done polynomials in extension one, haven't you, yeah? So you know, when you get given a random cubic, right, you actually, the, the main thing we suggest is start throwing some numbers at it, right? And the factor theorem, the factor theorem should tell you, if for example, I throw two into this, Right, I throw a 2 in, and then I get 0 at the other end. What does the factor theorem tell me? If I threw 2 in, that means x minus 2 will be a factor, right? And once you've got x minus 2, you say, okay, I'm going to have to pull out that polynomial division thing, which takes a half a page to write, but at least I can do it. At least I can do it. I can divide this by whatever you got, right? And then um, you'll get a quadratic out the other end, and you can work with that. Those are awesome. Here's the problem. Uh, you can't do that with this, right? This has no, um, it has no integer roots, right? No integer roots. So you're going to throw 1 and 2 and 3 and then negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3 and you're just going to keep on going until the cows come home. You will never guess this solution. But by just this very subtle use of this, like, is this a hard question? I mean, it's a bit weird, but it's not hard. We've done harder than this, okay? So we've turned a very, an insoluble problem into a fairly straightforward one. What should I do next? Find out what value of theta gets half. Yeah, I should solve this for 3 theta, right? 3 theta. Yeah, I chose a bad number. I'm going to solve this for 3 theta. What values of 3 theta, if you take cos of them, will give you a half? Okay. Okay, so I can I can think 60 degrees, right? And if I have the graph, right? This is, here's, there's a half, right? So there's 60. So just look at the symmetry of the diagram. Where's the other solution? It's 300, it's 300 like forward, backwards, right? Or if you wanted to think about it that way, you're saying first quadrant, fourth quadrant. Yeah, are you with me? Okay. Now, sorry, 60 and 300, they're fine, but um, I, I'd like to think in radians. I'm, I'm trying to get used to this. So 60 is going to be pi on 3. 
Um, 300 is going to be... 5 pi r 3, very good, because it is 5 times that. Now just pause for a minute. We're so used to solving from 0 to 360, 0 to 2 pi, at this point we're like, yeah, those are, those are solutions, right? But we know there are more, right? And in fact, something that we've learned in extension 2 clues us into the fact that there have to be more, and not just more, but how many more? There should be exactly one more, right? Because the fundamental theorem of algebra tells you this thing should have three roots. Uh, I should be able to find all of them. Now, I've only written down two for reasons that will become clear in a minute. Maybe you can anticipate them now based on previous lessons. I'm going to write four of them rather than three, just, just so I can content myself that I've got all of them. What would the next one be? Hmm. I think it's going to be seven pi on three. I've got everything within one period. Okay? And then to get to the next one, I'll add 2 pi to that. And then to get to the fourth one, I'm going to add 2 pi to this. What, what's adding 2 pi to that? I think it's 11 pi on 3. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, good. I've got, I've got four solutions written down. I'm expecting one of them should be a duplicate. Right? So let's find out. I solve for 3 theta, so I better solve for theta now. What do I do? Divide by 3. So that was not hard. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. But at this point, do you remember when we were working out roots of unity and I wrote down an extra root? Do you remember that? And then I found that this last one I wrote down was exactly 2 pi more than this one. So you're like, oh, cool. It's done. I don't need to worry about that one. It's a repeat. But this root is not 2 pi more than any of these roots, right? So. If it's a duplicate, it's not a duplicate because of periodicity, okay? Now, I want you to think, right? 11 pi on 9. Hmm. Where is this on my graph, right? I've got 0 to 2 pi. 0 to 2 pi. That's pi halfway through. I need a new color. It's getting a bit confusing. Here's pi. Everything is on 9, right? So the midway is actually 9 pi on 9. Do you agree with that? Yes? Okay, let's have a look at where these solutions are. Pi on 9, it's like a small angle. 5 pi on 9. Now, look at these two for a second. Look at them. Where are they? Here's 9 pi on 9. So, 7 pi on 9 is just a little bit this way. Do you agree? 11 pi on 9 is the same distance in the opposite direction. Do you notice that? Now, look at cosine. Look at it cos 7 pi on 9 and cos 11 pi on 9 are the same number. You can go ahead and you can punch it into your calculator. The angles are not the same, but their cosines are the same. Okay? So when I look at this, right, I'm going to say we solve for 3 theta, that was good. We solve for theta, that was better. But my original question had no thetas in it. So what am I going to do to try and close this off? I've got to go back, yeah, I've got to go back, get out of thetas, get out of there, right? So I'm going to say, therefore, x is going to be cos pi on 9, cos 5 pi on 9, cos 7 pi on 9. The last angle I have written is this one, but go ahead, throw it in your calculator and you will find that these two are the same. So therefore, I do not need to include them. Because it's a cubic, the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us there should be exactly three roots. That should really be an all. And uh, I found them. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn this on, just so you can see. Uh, this is really cool, right? Remember I told you, like, <laughs> this is a what are you doing here lesson, right? Now here is the reason why it is so very difficult to work with cubics, okay? You looked at this and you're like, ooh, maybe I can guess a solution and, and get something like that. And you can't, right? Maybe I can get some like square roots out of this. Like, well, no, you can't. Your answers here, they're weird. Like, who's, who's sitting there guessing like, ooh, the fact of theorem. I'll put in cos pi on nine. That was, that was like my next guess, okay? <laughs> you're never gonna guess these solutions. Cubics, are stranger beasts than that, okay? Now I'm just turning on this projector, it's warming up, because I want to show you what these numbers are. Maybe if you have your calculator there, you can work them out for me before I get there. But I want to show you 
where the solutions are. Cool, that's warming up. This is the best. Okay, have a look at this, right? Now this cubic, I've zoomed in a little bit just so you can see it really clearly. This cubic is 8x cubed minus 6x minus 1, right? And what we have solved is where that cubic equals 0. There they are, right? Now something that's interesting is that cos pi on 9, pi on 9 is an acute angle, right? It's less than pi on 2, okay? So that's why it's positive. There you go, it's just less than 1. Does someone, can someone get the decimal value for that, cos pi on 9? Uh, that means it's cos 20 degrees. degrees. Oh, wait, no. Yeah? Oh, it's 20 degrees, right? Oh, yeah, 0 0.766. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's where it is. But cos 5 pi on 9 and cos 7 pi on 9 are negative. That's because, look at the angles, right? Pi on 2, that's 4.5 pi on 9. That's a right angle, but these are bigger than that. So cos of those angles ends you up negative. Okay? So you can see it's quite a, it's quite a thing to take this problem and um, you know, using very sophisticated tools, like this is completely a real number problem, right? It's completely a real number problem. But we sort of snuck in this other way of doing it because now all of this stuff we know through complex numbers, okay? Does anyone have any questions? You've got a good 10 minutes. Uh, I won't ask any more of you than that. To have a look at exercise 1.6 and have a go at number one, Proving a trig identity of your own with De Marvis theorem, and then secondly, taking one of those results, like like this one here, see that one, right? And then using it in an unusual context, like solving a polynomial.